Welcome to the next lesson, shipping by air or by sea. And here's what we're going to be covering. Domestic versus international shipping, an overview of the entire shipping process, how to run this business from anywhere in the world, we'll do a comparison of air versus sea shipping and how to decide which to use, and then we'll learn about freight forwarders and inspection services and how they can make your life so much easier. Now this lesson is only for those importing their products. If your manufacturer is in the same country as the Amazon marketplace that you're selling in, you're not importing and you can simply use Amazon's own internal shipping service, which is very simple to use. And we will be covering that in a later module. However, if your manufacturer is located in a different country as the Amazon marketplace you're selling in, then you will need to have your products imported. And this lesson is for you. I put together the following graphical representation to give you a high level overview of how the entire importation process works. And it's pretty much the same whether it goes by air or by sea. First, you have your supplier who manufactures the products. And once they're ready, they'll deliver those products to the international port. And I'm considering that the port that's in their country. And it can be either an airport or a seaport, depending on how they're shipping the products. Those products are then loaded onto a vessel, either an airplane or an ocean freighter. And then they take off and finally arrive at some point in time at the domestic port. And the domestic port I'm considering as the port of the country that Amazon is located that you're selling in. And again, this will be either an airport or a seaport. At that point, those products then go to some type of local prep place. This can be your home. This can be a freight forwarder warehouse or an inspection service. And what happens here is that the appropriate labels from UPS are added onto your shipping containers. And then UPS comes, and picks those up and delivers them to the Amazon FBA warehouse. That's the entire process. Now, keep in mind the step we talked about, the local prep. Some of your suppliers may say that you don't need that. They're more than willing to put on the appropriate Amazon labels for you. However, in our experience, especially when you're just starting out, you don't want to leave this in the hands of the suppliers. You want to make sure that you or someone that you hire and trust takes care of that very important step of actually making sure they get delivered directly to Amazon. So our recommendation is to follow this process for at least your first one or two imports. This entire business can be run from anywhere in the world regardless of where you're living and what Amazon marketplace you're selling on. You can set this process up so that you never have to touch your products other than the samples that you'll get when choosing your first product. Even when importing from China, you can have your product shipped to Amazon and completely bypass you. The secret to doing this is by using a service from a freight forwarder and an inspection service, but we'll talk more about those later. Now, how you ship by air or by sea will depend upon the size, weight and quantity of your first inventory order. So how do you decide between air and sea? Well, if your product is light and small, less than a pound, basically shipping by air is a possibility. If it's larger or heavier, it's likely to be shipped by sea. Then if you're not sure, it's always a good idea to get a quote for both and check for profitability. You can also use the Freytos calculator we talked about earlier in order to get some very good estimates. Be sure to ask your supplier. They'll definitely have a recommendation on how to ship it based upon the size of your order. And here's a tip. Sometimes you may want to do both. You may want to ship some of your inventory by air, even if you're not making money off that and the rest by sea. You can do this sometimes when you want to start selling that product sooner and you don't want to wait for an ocean shipment to arrive. The main differences between the two come down to cost, time and complexity. Shipping by sea is much cheaper. And air typically costs three to five times as much. Shipping by sea, however, takes 25 to 35 days, while shipping by air typically takes less than a week. Air is also much simpler since it doesn't have to go through the seaports. Sea shipping has lots of steps and regulations, but we'll let our freight forwarder handle all of that for us. Now your supplier might suggest letting them handle the shipping all the way to Amazon. And while it is possible to have that work, we highly recommend against it. Instead, we recommend using a freight forwarder who'll take care of everything and make sure that you have no problems. So let's talk about freight forwarders. Importing products is a huge industry and it's filled with rules and regulations. A simple mistake can be incredibly costly. We've heard of people losing an entire shipments simply because of a filing error. The solution, hire a freight forwarder. A freight forwarder is a company that specializes in importing products. They can handle both sea and air shipments, 
and they're actually very affordable and their costs are built right into your shipping costs. Building a relationship with a freight forwarder is one of the best decisions I've ever made and can be invaluable to your business. Some freight forwarders provide many other services as well, such as warehousing, inspection and prepping services, and forwarding your products onto Amazon. Again, we highly recommend using a freight forwarder for your inventory shipments. And we have a list of known and trusted freight forwarders in the private resource vault, and we're constantly adding more to that list. Let's talk about inspection and forwarding services. Now, once your products arrive via sea or air, they still need to get to Amazon. If you have your products shipped to you at your home, you can expect the products, set up shipping inside of Cell Essential using Amazon's UPS partnership, and then label and ship the products to Amazon yourself. I did this for almost a year and there's absolutely nothing wrong with it and it's perfectly fine for getting started. But what if you can't do this? Or what if you simply don't want to? The safest way to accomplish it is to use an inspection and forwarding service. An inspection and forwarding service can do a lot of things. They can arrange pickup of your inventory from the port warehouse. They can bring it back to their own warehouse for inspection and labeling, plus any necessary prep work you might have. And then they can ship the products to Amazon using Amazon's UPS partnership. Now keep in mind, many freight forwarders, they now do this inspection and forwarding service as well. So be sure to ask them as it will greatly simplify the process. And as with freight forwarders, we've compiled a list of known and trusted inspection and forwarding services in the private resource vault as well. Once you're ready to place your order, here's what you can do. You'll want to contact a freight forwarder and get a quote from them. The importation checklist below this lesson will tell you exactly what you need to provide to them in order to get a quote, but includes many things such as the shipment details from your supplier, such as the quantity, dimensions, weight, type of product, the cost, the origination or the supplier's warehouse, and the final destination, which will either be your home, your inspection and forwarding service, or Amazon, your company or personal information if you don't have a company, and then any services you want performed, such as inspection, labeling, and forwarding. If you accept their quote and want to use them, they'll then set you up with an account and ask for many other things, such as assigned power of attorney. Don't need to worry about that. That's just for clearing your products through customs. A customs form 5106, that's for the USA only, and an EORI, or an Economic Operator's Registration and Identification, and that's for the EU countries only. They might want to deposit if your shipping costs are very expensive. They'll want your company or your personal details. And then they'll talk to you about something called a continuous or single entry bond application. And they'll explain exactly the difference between the two. Now, keep in mind, the importation checklist below also has all this information on there so you can read exactly what they'll need from you. Now, importing products and having them sent to Amazon can seem a bit intimidating, but it doesn't have to. Let's just quickly overview the entire process from placing your order to getting it to Amazon. You place your order with your supplier, and then you have your freight forwarder contact them to arrange the shipment details. Manufacturing is then complete roughly 30 days later, and your inventory is loaded up and ships out. The inventory arrives at the airport or seaport, and then your freight forwarder handles all customs clearing and notifies you when the inventory is cleared and available for pickup. Then the inventory is sent either to you at your home, to your inspection service, or to the freight forwarder's own warehouse where it'll be labeled and forwarded on the Amazon. And in order to do that, you create the shipment labels right inside of Cello Central, and don't worry, we'll cover how to do that later. You have them printed, and then you have them attached to your inventory cartons. Then UPS simply picks up the inventory and delivers them to Amazon's FBA warehouse. And that's the entire shipping process in a nutshell. Before we wrap up this lesson, let's talk about two common shipping questions we get from new sellers. The first is, can I just ship my product straight from my overseas supplier to Amazon? Well, for your first shipment, we highly recommend not doing this. You want someone, whether it's you, an inspection service, or your freight forwarder, to see your shipment before it goes to Amazon. Amazon has very strict requirements for receiving shipments from overseas, and you risk having your shipment declined by Amazon's receiving department. There's just too much risk involved, and you don't yet know your supplier well enough to trust that they'll do everything correctly. Now, once you are comfortable with your supplier and your shipper, you can consider doing this as long as you make sure that they know all of the requirements. The other question is, can I just use my supplier's own shipping service and not even hire a freight forwarder? 
Well, again, for your first shipment, we highly recommend not doing this. Oftentimes, suppliers only quote you the price of shipping and not all the other fees involved, and you'll have to pay those. And sometimes, suppliers only provide shipping to the port or airport and require you to figure out how to get it from there, which is not easy. However, we have seen members do this successfully when the cost of the merchandise is less than $2,500 and they're having it shipped to their home first. If you decide to do this, keep in mind that you must be willing to accept the risk of losing your inventory if something goes wrong. Let's quickly recap what we talked about in this lesson. We covered domestic versus international shipping. We did an overview of the entire process. We learned how to run this business from anywhere in the world. We did a comparison of air versus sea shipping and how to decide which one to use. We learned about freight forwarders and inspection services and how they can make our lives so much easier. And then we did another overview of the entire shipping process. Now I'll see you in our next video where we'll learn how to place our first inventory order.